What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hope it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a doctor working in London. And guys, I have a bit of a different sort of style video today. Normally how my videos work is if I'm not vlogging and I'm sitting down, just kind of chatting to you guys, I normally have a bunch of lines, not scripted, but I normally have you know, a few bullet points kind of outlining what I want to talk about in a given video. But today I wanted to do a sort of different style video, just sitting down casually and talking to you guys and reflecting on my time over the last four months of being a doctor after graduating from medical school. So I've got my coffee here with me. I've got maybe four or five bullet points and I'm just gonna be speaking from the heart, telling you guys about all of the highs and all of the lows uh, that I've had in the last four months of my first job being a doctor. To catch you guys up, so for the last four months, I've actually been in pediatrics. Actually, let's, let's, let's go way before that. So I actually officially graduated from medical school back in June, had my graduation ceremony. And then in July, I had my graduation ball, which was amazing. And I started started my first job as a junior doctor right at the end of July. I started the whole kind of induction process at the hospital and immediately went off to start working on the wards. And in that time, I was actually in pediatrics. So I guess to quickly summarize uh, pediatrics, I absolutely loved pediatrics. I had a great time. The staff were amazing. All of my colleagues were great. Um, the patients were amazing. You know, kids are really, really cute. It definitely was my favorite so far. And I imagine it being that way for quite a long time. So if you're a medical student or, you know, someone looking to start off working in the UK, then I highly recommend pediatrics as a specialty uh, to actually go into for any of your jobs that you might possibly have. And the kind of two reasons I want to make this video, the first reason is just, you know, for you guys, I want to always, you know, keep you guys up to date with my life as a doctor. You know, I know there's loads of medical students who watch my channel, so hopefully this can be some sort of motivation for you guys. The second reason why I wanted to film this video was just to reflect. I, I feel like just sitting down and having half an hour to talk about my feelings and my reflections to an actual camera to, you know, to make a YouTube video definitely helps me to reflect on life and I also love coming back you know in the future to watch these videos just to see how Kenji at the time was feeling. The first thing I wanted to kind of reflect on was the transition between being a medical student to being a doctor and this was such a weird transition. I'm actually at the hospital that I was at for my final year of medical school. So I spent an entire year at this hospital for medical school and then um, you know I, I finished placement end of May sort of early uh, June. I graduated and I came back the following month in July to finally be a doctor and that was so such a weird transition because I remember walking the halls as a medical student and literally having no responsibility, just being there to learn. And then fast forward like four or five weeks later, I'm now this doctor who has, you know, lots of responsibility and has, I guess, you know, some sort of legal power or, you know, power to help patients in a good way. And that was such a weird transition. The funny thing is like during medical school, there really is no like, you know, period between being a medical student and having no responsibility and being a doctor. There's no like transition period. I guess in final year of medical school, um, and, you know, we had a transition to F1 module where you're still a medical student, but you're, you know, you're kind of seen as part of the team and you are given more responsibilities, but even that doesn't really prepare you for the actual day being a doctor. I remember on one of my first shifts as a junior doctor, I remember this nurse coming up to me and being like, you know, excuse me, doctor, this patient needs uh, your help. They're not doing too well. Can you please come and review them? And I remember literally that first interaction, I was like, okay, like give me two minutes. I'm gonna go find a doctor and, um, you know, we'll come and help you. And I realized, hold on, this, did that doctor, I'm I'm going to find is actually me and like now I have to go and review this patient and you know and help them as much as I possibly can so that was a really really you know weird feeling and as I said there is no like sort of you know middle ground one day you're a medical student you have no responsibility you don't have GMC license you literally you know it's very different and then the next day you're all of a sudden you have GMC license you're a doctor you have responsibility you're an employee for the NHS you work at the hospital and you have to be there at 9 a.m every single day and you have to leave at 5 p.m you know whereas <laughs> when I was a medical student I remember just showing off the ward round you know doing a few you know bits and bobs here and there and then I'd leave you know maybe in the early afternoon that transition was so weird to being like I'm not a student anymore I'm not a medical student anymore I'm a doctor now and I have responsibility to you know to help patients that was just such a weird transition especially like prescribing my first ever drug I remember being in a &E. yeah I was in the pediatric a &E, and this nurse came up to me and was like doctor this patient you know is about to be given some medications but as part of this medication they, they need to have their sort of um, um, anaphylaxis medication also prescribed just in case they go into anaphylaxis and I remember being like, oh, I know how to prescribe this in theory, right? I, pres I passed all of my prescribing exams, I passed my OSCEs, but to actually do this in real life and know that this medication might actually go on to, you know, potentially affect a patient was so weird. And I remember like being so nervous just to prescribe paracetamol, just to prescribe ibuprofen. I remember like literally triple checking everything, you know, asking my registrar to please confirm my prescription and make sure my paracetamol prescription is okay. It was really weird. And, you know, even till this day, to be fair, it's only been five months now and I still quite hesitate 
content and I still triple check everything. And that's always a good thing. But also what I hope is that with time, as I become more of a confident doctor, as I get used to prescribing more medications, I'm hoping that will sort of eventually go away because that, you know, takes a lot of energy in your mind to triple check everything, to overthink everything. That definitely takes more energy than maybe it possibly should. So that was the first thing I want to talk to you guys about. So we're going to take a quick break to tell you guys about a company that I've been using for almost two years now, HelloFresh, who are kindly sponsoring the video. HelloFresh provide all the fresh ingredients I need to cook deliciously simple meals from scratch and all the help I need to become a confident cook. Every single ingredient is delivered straight to your door, which means fewer trips to the supermarket, meaning that it suits my busy lifestyle as a doctor with wallet friendly prices and meals starting from just £3.25 per meal per person. HelloFresh offer a wide choice of recipes to help me maintain a broad and balanced diet from wholesome recipes to rapid recipes ready in just under 20 minutes. And there really is something for everyone to try. After a long day on the hospital wards, I really enjoyed this Chamula spice lamb meal, which I was able to make in under 20 minutes. And if you'd like to try HelloFresh out for yourself, then for a limited time only, you can get 60% off your first box and 25% off the next eight boxes using my discount code on the screen or by clicking down below in the description. The second thing on my list is it's really great to finally use the skills that you've been trained for. Now, don't get me wrong, like when you're in medical school, you do get to do cool things. You get to take blood and cannulate and catheterize. You do all these things. Don't get me wrong, like you, you do, you are a very skilled person. But when you finally go through all five years of medical school, you realize, you actually sometimes realize how many skills you actually have. You, you realize not just practical skills, but in terms of like taking histories and examinations, you have so many skills that you can possibly, you know, use to help patients. And that was really, really good to finally see. So I just loved showing up to the wards and, you know, being a part of the team and being able to use the skills that I've learned throughout all five years of medical school to actually help patients. What I also really like is, as you guys know, I also started to be a locum doctor. So I started doing extra shifts here and there in order to, you know, to gain more skills and earn a bit of money on the side as well. And it was so cool to know that I'm being paid extra money in order to go to hospital and learn new skills. They, that means they must actually, you know, value my skills. That means they actually, they must actually need my help. And it was so good to know that I'm coming here to use my skills, to give the NHS, to give to patients, to, to know that I'm making a difference and to know that they actually wanted me there and they actually needed me there. You know, when you're a medical student, of course, you're able to help everyone, but it's quite different when you're a medical student. You are there and you can help people, but people kind of feel bad to, you know, to pressure you and to, to give you jobs because you're not being paid to do jobs. So you often come, you know, go on the ward round, you learn and you go home. But when you're a doctor, you do feel like if you're there from nine to five for eight hours or sometimes from 9 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., during that time, you're able to actually use all of your skills as much as you can in order to help patients. So that was just nice to know that, you know, I'm here for a reason. I'm here because, not just because I'm being paid to be here, I'm here because I have skills that I've learned over five years, you know, for some people it's been six years, to actually, you know, make a difference in other people's lives. So that was also an amazing experience to actually have. The next thing that I really enjoyed and I wanted to reflect on is how great it feels to actually be able to help patients. And don't get me wrong, guys, you're not saving lives every single day as a doctor. Sometimes you're, you know, I might spend a whole entire day just doing admin, doing discharge letters, but there are these odd occasions, or not necessarily odd occasions, but there are, you know, times, you know, here and there during the week where you will do something and you will help a patient and it will feel so amazing and you just feel so overwhelmed with how great it finally feels to be able to make a difference in someone's life. So to give you guys an example of what I mean, um, of course, change the details of what happened. I was actually in the pediatric A&E one day and I had this child come in and they had orbital cellulitis um, and they, so they had a huge eye, it was swollen, they couldn't see, it was, you know, completely swollen shut. You know, the child was really in pain and they were crying and so upset. And I remember coming in as this F1 doctor, I took a full history and during medical school, you are, orbital cellulitis is something that you're always taught to rule out and to be aware of because of how dangerous it is to a patient's eye. So I came in, I did a full history, I did a full examination and I made the conclusion that I think this is orbital cellulitis. So I remember going to my registrar, telling them my diagnosis and my management plan. You know, I told them we need to, you know, put a cannula in, we need to start antibiotics as soon as possible and then we need to admit them to the ward and also speak to ophthalmology, get, you know, a CT scan and all these things. It was so weird, like how I knew that information. You know, I can't remember the, I can't like pin down or remember the day in the library where I learned this information. I can't pin pin down the particular, you know, maybe revision or practice session that I had that allowed me to learn this medication. I actually can't remember. But just knowing that I had it somewhere in my head and I was able to bring it out at the right time, this felt amazing. And my registrar actually agreed. So I went back into the room. I put a cannula in this patient. She was around, you know, maybe four or five years old. I put a cannula inside her and then I, um, I prescribed the medications, the antibiotics to be given IV. And then I spoke to the nurse to please, um, you know, 
know, start this um, antibiotics as soon as possible. And then I made the call to the ward and I handed over this patient to the ward registrar. I told them the whole entire history, what we've done, what the plan is. When I actually reached the end of that and the patient was on the ward, it just felt so amazing to know that I made a difference and I actually helped this patient. And it was me who put the cannula in. It was me who started the antibiotics. Of course, I did it with the team and I had the team who were amazing at, you know, to help me. But you know what I'm trying to say in terms of, you know, making a difference for once and being able to use my skills to properly, you know, help a patient was just fantastic. And these are the sort of periods of time that reminds me about why I went into medicine. You know, it reminds me that I'm a doctor now and gives me that sense of fulfillment and self, of self sense of kind of joy to know that I'm making a difference and I can make a difference. Okay, so let's quickly talk about something that I didn't particularly like about the transition between being a medical student and being a doctor. So as I said, when you're a medical student, right, you can show up to the ward at 9 a.m., spend three hours on the ward round, maybe, you know, help here and there. But then whenever you want to leave, you can kind of, you know, you can kind of leave whenever you want pretty much. And oftentimes I would leave after lunch. You know, I would sometimes leave even before lunch if the ward round is particularly short and there's not much going on in the ward. So as a medical student, I really loved having my freedom. I'd spend three hours a day maybe on the ward round doing medicine. I'd go home, I'd have lunch. Uh, during my lunch break, I might play half an hour of Call of Duty, um, you know, on my Xbox. And then I might spend another, you know, two to three hours making YouTube videos for you guys. And I loved that, you know, I had so much, I still do have so much passion in making YouTube videos. And then, you know, maybe around 5 p.m. I would do some more studying for medical school. Um, and then I go to gym around 7 p.m. Just having the freedom to control my day and do what I want just felt it felt so amazing. I'm not the sort of person who loves doing medicine every single day, all day long. I love doing YouTube. I love, you know, working out and I love going to the gym. I love spending time with my friends. I love, you know, doing business and all these things. And one thing I didn't really like is when I became a doctor, all of that freedom sort of disappeared overnight. You know, I went to having all that freedom that I just described to then being a doctor and having to be at the hospital from nine to 5 p.m. every single day. And now, you know, in my job in geriatrics, you know, I have to work weekends sometimes. When I'm on call once a week I have to work until 9 30 p.m. you know it's, it's really difficult you know because now you have to be at a particular location from 9 to 5 or 9 to 9 30 p.m. you have to work some weekends you know you have to be on call and I found that quite hard you know I'm still in the position where I haven't really been able to find that balance quite yet I probably go gym maybe two times a week now which I'm not really happy with I see my friends a lot less often even finding time to do these YouTube videos has been quite difficult and I'm so glad that I've been able to continue doing YouTube and I, I really empathize with the doctors who I used to watch on YouTube, who like made amazing videos and I followed their journey. And then they become a doctor and they stop making videos. And I can completely understand why that is. You know, it becomes so overwhelming and you spend so much time at work and it really is hard to find that balance between working as a doctor and doing all those things that you love to do when you had that freedom. So that has been quite strange and I do really miss having that freedom. As I said, you know, reflecting on this, I, I still am trying every single day, guys, to find that balance, to find the right balance of being a doctor and keeping up with all these things that I I absolutely love in life. Going gym has been particularly hard and I really want to get back into, into working out and, you know, building muscle and being healthy because, you know, health is my number one priority. But not having that freedom hasn't been that great, but it has taught me something about myself. It probably means that in my future, I, I don't think I'll be able to do medicine full-time and full-time meaning five days a week. I'll be so happy to have some of my freedom back and maybe do medicine four times a week, three times a week. I have friends who are doing that right now who are in, let's say, surgical training programs and they're doing 60% a week and they're finding that so much more manageable because they work three days a week and they also have four days a week off to do the other things in their life that they really enjoy, like working out and all these other things. So that's something I've learned about myself recently. I don't think I'm gonna be a 100% you know, full-time doctor. I think it's gonna end up being pretty much 80% or 60% even when I finish this you know, foundation training program being F1 and F2. So that's been quite a weird transition and definitely something I wanted to reflect on uh, with you guys. So one thing that really gets me up in the morning, of course, other than you know wanting to go help patients and stuff like that is the team dynamic. When I was in pediatrics and even now in geriatrics, I I had such an amazing team. You know, my registrars, my fellow F1s and F2s, the SHOs, the consultants, they were all so amazing. And I really loved being part of a team. Again, when you're a medical student, you do feel like part of the team sometimes. But the thing with being a medical student is you're only there for like six to eight weeks sometimes. Sometimes you're not even on the same ward for very long. You might only be on a particular ward for four days throughout the whole entire eight weeks. So it's really hard to develop that sort of team rapport. It's really hard to kind of feel as part of a team because you don't see these people every day. You come in, you learn and you leave. 
when you're a doctor and you're there from 9 to 5 or 9 to 9 30 p.m you have so much time surrounded by your colleagues and you also are there for you know four months at a time so i really love the team dynamic i made really good friends and when you get to work that's something that you just really enjoy if i was let's say a doctor 60 percent of the time in the future and i do less than full-time training i i think this is probably the number one thing that i'll actually miss about being a doctor you know that's this is something that i kind of understand when, when people who work from home tell me that they, they can sometimes get quite lonely or it can be quite difficult i do understand that because there is something different about going to work and having a team you know it's something different about let's say being in a cardiac arrest situation or in a, a, a resuscitation situation and you have your colleagues surrounded you know surrounding you you're really working together to, to save a patient and not just that but even on your lunch breaks you know going for lunch with your colleagues or having a bit of banter i think if i wasn't to be a full-time doctor that's definitely the number one thing that i will miss because working at home from my desk or you know yeah literally working from home from my desk it will never be quite the same because you you'll never really have that team dynamic which is one reason that i would find it hard to leave medicine i really love that aspect of medicine being able to you know really work as a team it's very it's very different to let's say working as a team i don't know when i was working as a bartender when i was you know 18 19 it's very different it's a very different team dynamic when it's someone's life that is on the table who you're trying to save so that's one thing i really loved about being a doctor and something i'm definitely gonna miss if i do less than full-time training okay so the second last thing that i wanted to kind of mention and reflect on is having a salary is great guys although you spend so much time in the hospital although you don't have freedom anymore when you get to the end of the month or even you know when i was locuming at the end of the week to know that i'm getting money you know in my bank account made a huge difference and i don't want to make this video about money and be like you know i love money so much but when you're a medical student and i was a student for eight years guys i was broke from 18 to 26. it, it, it can get really hard sometimes particularly when i was in medicine i had to fund medicine pretty much myself because i was a graduate right so there were times that were quite tough when you even though i went on holiday quite often as a medical student and i was really blessed to be able to go on, on holiday quite often you're not even able to spend as much money as you want maybe you're, if you're, you're on holiday and you want to go on a a, you know snorkeling or on a, a glass boat ride you know you're not getting any money at the end of the month you know that you're relying purely on your savings and that one day these savings might come to an end it does get quite difficult so when you finally become a doctor and you get your first paycheck i remember the first paycheck i had in, in august it felt so so good and being able to afford things you know i lived in student accommodation for 80 years you know i lived in some in some pretty bad locations as a student and looking back now and being able to have my apartment now you know my one bedroom apartment that i have and having the freedom to be able to have my girlfriend come by for lunch and my friends come by as well being able to film in you know in, in a in a permanent setup finally and i'm not like you know pushing my uh, filming setup you know to try to get to my my single bed when i was a student it really was quite amazing and i actually went on the first big holiday since you know becoming a doctor back uh, last month in november I went back home to Kenya and for the first time ever I was actually able to go out and eat at restaurants and not feel sort of bad when I when I make a payment for the bill because I know that I earned this I know that I've worked hard for the last you know three months and I can afford a, a meal now I can afford to just treat my mum and treat my girlfriend to something or you know or whatever it might be and having that freedom that money can bring has definitely been amazing I kind of you know went overboard by doing too many extra shifts I made a whole video on you know why I stopped being a locum doctor you know for the time being which you can check up there finding the right balance between working and earning money um, and still being able to do what you love is, is something i'm still working on but i definitely have enjoyed um you know having a salary the last thing i wanted to touch on guys before we end this uh, rambly video is being a doctor has been very tiring you know I, I think although i've loved it although it's you know it's great and I've, i love pediatrics so much i remember coming home after every single shift in pediatrics even if it was only a 9 to 5 p.m shift and just collapsing on my sofa every single day i promise you like i literally would come home i would lie on my sofa and i would pass out for 40 minutes sometimes even an hour because I don't think every single doctor, you know, necessarily does this, but I, I was a new doctor, guys. So everything that I saw on a day-to-day -day basis was completely new for me. And I feel like I kind of reached that information overload period. And even till this day, it's not, it's not quite as bad. I don't, I don't sleep or nap immediately when I get home anymore. I still have that feeling of like being overstimulated because when you're at work as a new doctor, as I said, you have to triple check everything. And I imagine these sort of things become so
so second nature to you as a doctor when you've been doing it for such a long time. But I, as I said, everything was new for me. Your brain is on 24 seven. And what I realized now, guys, you know, I've worked a lot of jobs previously to, to this. I have been a bartender, I've been a waiter, I've been like a Mexican um, sort of um, uh, chef. I have worked in research as well. I've um, worked, you know, for the university giving like campus tours. I've done so many jobs, but no job has ever compared to how tired I get as a doctor. And I really think like, I'm not trying to put down any other job. I think, you know, every other job is, is difficult in its own right. But I think being a doctor is very different. On a nine to five shift as a doctor, sometimes you can literally be working nonstop, right? And some people say, you know, they start work at nine, but they don't actually start work at nine. They sit at their desk at nine o'clock. They then, you know, they get their coffee. They, you know, set up their desk. They turn on their laptop. They have a little chat with their friends. But in medicine, when, when we say we start at nine, the ward round literally starts at nine o'clock. If you're not there at nine o'clock and you're ready to just get going straight away, you'll be left behind. So literally from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. when I have to leave, other than my half an hour lunch that I don't always get because of how busy it is sometimes, other than that half an hour lunch, every single second pretty much is spent doing a job. And it's not just any job. Sometimes you're balancing three or four different jobs. Sometimes maybe you're seeing two or three patients at the same time. It, it, it is nonstop, guys. Pediatrics was probably less so. I feel like in pediatrics, I had a bit more time, but definitely so far on my new rotation in um, stroke geriatrics, it is like we are, we are nonstop moving, guys. And your brain has no time to rest at all. And that's definitely been something I've I found quite hard as a new doctor. Um, I have my first on-call ward cover shift on Friday, and that's gonna be a whole, you know, entire new experience. I'll be on the ward from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then from 5 p.m. till 9.30 p.m., I'll be the on-call doctor covering, covering, you know, emergencies and also all of the kind of uh, jobs from, you know, 5 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And that's gonna be really, really draining. Particularly when I have these 12 and a half hour shifts, guys, and I finish at 9.30 p.m., I don't actually get home until 10.30 p.m. And when I get home at 10.30 p.m., I'm already past my bedtime because I normally sleep at 10 a.m. But I literally have half an hour to eat dinner, to shower, to get changed so that, so that I can be in bed and make sure that I'm not losing sleep for the next day's shift, which will start at 9 a.m. And I don't wanna like, I'm not, I'm not complaining, guys. I'm not whining at all. But I just wanted to reflect and make you guys aware of that. I guess this is the sort of video I wanted to have when I was a medical student, just to sort of prepare yourself that, you know, being a medical student is quite different from being a doctor. You know, the, the timing is different. The expectations are different. And when you're actually there as a doctor and you have to be there until 9.30 p.m., it's a very different lifestyle. They can definitely be quite tiring and overwhelming at times. So if you're a medical student right now or you're a student and you're not a doctor yet, please, please, please enjoy your time. Don't force yourself to be in the hospital all day long, you know, um, and have no breaks. If you want to, you know, take some time to enjoy life, do that. I, I was traveling so much as a medical student. Literally every two months I would travel, not necessarily abroad, but just to have a new experience, you know, every two months because trust me and believe me, when you start being a doctor, guys, your time is gone. You will be like quite tired and, and yeah, life will start hitting you. So enjoy your time as much as you can, you know, as, as a medical student, guys, or wherever you are in life. I'm not complaining. I, I have absolutely loved the last four months of, of being a doctor in pediatrics, and I'm super excited to see what the next, um, you know, four months now in stroke geriatrics will bring me. I now have to work, you know, on call shifts. I have to hold the bleep and respond to emergencies, um, you know, every now and again. And that's going to be a new experience, but also a very exciting experience as well. And I'm so excited to take you guys along with me. If you've reached it this far in the video, please put an alien emoji just so I know that, you know, there are people watching until the very end. And so I know that you guys actually like these videos. If you do, as well as an alien emoji, I'll be so grateful if you can just leave a comment and let me know what you thought about this video. I don't think I've actually ever done a video on this channel before where I just sit down, I have a coffee and just, you know, speak completely from the heart and tell you guys and reflect on my experience so far. I have about three weeks, sorry, three months, maybe one week left in, in geriatrics. And I'd love to do another one of these videos right at the end to reflect on this experience of the next uh, the next four months. Thank you guys so much for watching. Before you leave, please drop a like. Make sure you're subscribed as well with notifications on and I'll see you guys on the next video.